Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And today, we are going to be building a massive suburban development. Karen Sterling of the infamous Sterling family has decided that urban living is no longer for her. Uh, you see, for years, the Sterling family has lived right about here. Uh, this is the Sterling Square neighborhood. They were one of the founders of the city. They were as integral to the city as uh, Mr. Lewis was. However, a lot of time has passed. Uh, the city is about 100 years old at this point, and she has recently visited Santa Clarita, California and decided that is the lifestyle that she wants. That is the lifestyle that is not available anywhere within Verde Beach. And she is gonna get that lifestyle because she's gonna build it. So she's been acquiring land quietly. That's the way to do it. If you wanna consolidate a large chunk of land and she has consolidated everything from Oceanside all the way over to the river. And she wants to develop it. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention what is special about this episode. This is episode 50. We have been building Verde Beach together since December 3rd, 2020. And we're gonna go big today. We're gonna do something massive and I'm really excited to, go, to do it with you. So let's get started. So when we first look at this chunk of land, we wanna take a look at the topography to let that be our guide. And what I see is that there are some significant grades, but they're, you know, it, the slope is gradual. Certain areas like right here, clearly very steep same thing right here and along the road and that doesn't bother karen sterling too much because she is very interested in this land formation in fact she has let her consultant team know that this will be a fantastic park and it doesn't matter how we get to it we just need to get there and uh, she also wants there to be a water body around this park that is something that she has let her team know is absolutely mandatory. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is grade for the park, because this is going to be the center of the community. So we're gonna flatten this out. So this is not gonna be an episode where we are respecting the topography. Karen has unlimited money basically, and is gonna use it. So that is the approximate boundary of the park and this is going to be important because this is going to guide our entire build. So she wants to connect up right here with our collector. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use our slope terrain tool. We're going to select the collector with our right mouse button and then come down and slope down. We don't have enough fill. This will be our forever problem with this build. Not to worry though because she has another plan that is going to require a significant amount of terraforming. She wants there to be some sort of water feature in the park. So we're gonna come up here, grab the water and terraform. Now her consultant team has, has let her know that this right here is the high point of her neighborhood. And that is very disappointing for them to hear, but when you have unlimited money, you're okay. <laughs> you don't really, you're not, you're not thinking about the things that normal people would think about. And she has enough friends at the Department of Natural Resources that they're going to allow this significant development to occur. And as sad as it is that who you know matters, it absolutely matters. So you can see the start of what she wants to do. So. Let's get our first road in place. This is going to be a collector and it's gonna go straight down this path that we've created or slightly off the path that we've created. <laughs> All right, we're gonna to need to do a little bit of work to, 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 to remedy that. And then I know upfront that this is going to be a gated community. So I want to make sure that we are thinking about that with our connection. So where this bend comes, that is where we are going to place our gate in the future. We're gonna worry about that later. Next, let's think about how we're gonna work this neighborhood in. So we're gonna go 10 tiles over in each direction. It's approximately centered, that's pretty good. Then we're gonna come over 20 
can then go up. We'll go up 15. Go over 20. And up 15. Now I think from a topographic standpoint, we have not done what we intended to do. So we're going to need to take that back. Okay, so at least now we have formed our park. You know, as I look at this, it seems a little too extreme to me. So I think we're going to do it one more time. Okay, 10 and 10. And then we'll bring this up. We'll do 15. So let's go another 10. And this is where a new collector is going to be in the future. So there's going to be a lot of pre-planning. This would be the platting process. The platting process is really where you make a new neighborhood. You define all of the characteristics of it up front. And that's what she's doing. She is platting out a new neighborhood with the goal of having a totally functional, well laid out neighborhood. And I, I use well laid out in air quotes. <laughs> so don't fault me for the way that this looks because it's, it's not going to be ideal. I just said, don't fault me. You absolutely should fault me. I'm designing this, so. <laughs> There's no one to blame but me. But I'm, I'm, I'm building it from Karen's specifications for what that's worth. So Karen is willing to pay for a new bridge here. She doesn't care. At a certain point, money is not the object. The object is to build something spectacular. That is all she cares about. Okay, so I think we have that all laid out. And the very first thing that we're gonna do is, is get this going. Because this will be the selling feature of the neighborhood. Let's look at our topography to let that be our guide here. Replace that fairly high up. And for the time being, you're going to simply connect to the roads that we have and make our water connection. Now one issue that we're gonna have is a lack of power here. So we're gonna make a quick power connection. This is temporary. We will certainly be remedying this in the future. And now we've got a lot of trees in here that we need to get rid of. So let's do that right now too. And this isn't holding water very well, but we can fix that. That's an easy fix. So what we're going to do is go to our lowest setting, grab a moderate height, just close this off. And we'll taper it. There we go. And I kind of want to go through here and, and make sure that our, our levels are, are fairly similar throughout this. Because I'm noticing that water is flowing to one area or another. We don't want that. We want a very a very even flow. There we go. That's looking good. So now once this breaks the plane, we're going to have a nice flow of water. We should certainly try to hide this inlet. That's not what people want to see when they move into the neighborhood. They want it to feel natural, even though it's not. We know it's not. They know it's not too. They're not, they're not, they're not fools. Okay, so it feels a little bit more natural now. I think we're going to also place a bit of this, let's see what they call it, high vegetation for along the coastline here. Also, place a rock to make it a bit more interesting. Some rapids here. It'll be, it'll be really, really attractive. I guess that's subjective. But... I'm going to like it. <laughs> so this water body is the selling feature of the neighborhood. And this will eventually be home to an excellent park. But for the time being, it's just a really neat place to take a, take a look as you're driving. Because that's all you can really do here. So let's begin to flesh out the neighborhood. So I mentioned Santa Clarita, so I think it would be valuable for me to show you what this community looks like. So what you can see here is that there is the appearance of connectivity, but what it really is, is a whole bunch of collectors with... 
So there's major collectors, that's the roads in yellow, and then minor collectors, that's the roads that actually make connections. And then there's a whole bunch of cul-de-sacs all over the place. And that is exactly what Karen Sterling wants. So the reason that she is so obsessed with this idea is she is of the opinion that having a bunch of traffic funneling onto the collectors will ensure that the roads are safe for kids to play on because kids playing in roads is apparently a good thing. <laughs> so it's always the default argument. <laughs> I can't, my kids can't play in the road if it's, you know, if it's got sidewalks, my kids can't play in the road if, if, uh, if it's connected. So, you know, that's, that is her mindset. That's where she's at. And she has acquired this land. So, uh, since this is not in Verde Beach, this is outside of Verde Beach. And I'm, I'm really curious, what should we call this area? Cause it's certainly away from Verde Beach. It's significantly away. Um, I think we're going to call her neighborhood Sterling Estates. What, what should this part of the community be named? Let me know down in the comments. So now we're just trying to do whatever we can to improve the grades along what will soon be a collector couplet. So her team is frantically pushing dirt. And that is going to be the story of this. And that's kind of the story of suburbia in general. It's pushing dirt around so that you can make sure that you have as much saleable land as possible while still a, still meeting the goals that you have. And sometimes that's making your land attractive, even though it's in a, you know, objectively unattractive area to be based on the transportation options available to you, services around you, you're doing what you can. You're making a choice and that choice is that you value privacy or security or whatever that might be. You know, school systems, uh, the park network, trails, uh, seclusion, a larger lot. You're choosing that over the benefits of a city. Um, and you say that the benefits of a suburb are, are, are better, you know, and that is a choice that many people make all around the world. Uh, we make it a lot here in the U.S. There are many reasons for that. The U.S. government has certainly incentivized that over time uh, with some of the programs that they put together. Some of them have you know, deep roots in legalized segregation, I guess I would, I would call it. Um, so it's not, not good policies that have led us to where we're at, but I am not one to just say, you know, there are no benefits to living in a, in a suburb, so you shouldn't do it. Uh, clearly there are benefits, otherwise people wouldn't do it. So I'm waiting for this to spill over, but now that we've got this little ridge here, it's going to take a bit longer. And that's quite all right. This is looking nice. This looks like a really nice park. Okay, so let's think about the next things that we need. So we can't have just one way in. We need a couple. So we're going to have one freeway exit in. We're going to have a train connection. That's one thing that Karen saw here that she thought was very attractive. And she wants to have another exit out of here to get to the university. She wants this to be attractive to both university professors and astronauts scientists that's quite a tall order so we're going to take a look and find a place where we can inexpensively build an entrance into the community and i think that place is right here so we're going to take this down we're going to steal this height we're going to come over and make a spot for our road and this will again be a collector connection so we're going to come up Let's make sure we have all of our snap twos on. And then we'll follow this path that I just created. There we go. Now let's turn on our topographic view because we want to make a connection over to this road. And that's fine. We, there's no topography challenges there. We are unconcerned and unbothered by the terrain. So that will be our connection. And we are going to have a checkpoint here as well. And then we also want to have a connection up to our highway. So we should again, let our terrain be our guide. And right here, and that's that's a shout out to Lee Hawkins. <laughs> uh, so respect the topography and let the terrain be your guide. I love that Lee says that all the time because it absolutely is something that we should be thinking about. So I'm going to decommission some rail here and I'm not concerned because this rail line 
needs some work. Uh, but what we're gonna do is add an intersection in here. So all of this stuff, a lot of this stuff, I should say, is coming at the developer's expense. The interchange is not. In fact, this would need to be in some sort of plan. We would expect that the county would be very skeptical of this. Counties are always not great about road building. Uh, so uh, DOTs might be this. Actually, this is probably a DOT road, bluntly. Uh, so they're probably a little more okay with it. But even at that, they're not seeing the same benefit from the development that a city would be, or a county or a township. It's just different. Okay, so we're ooh, we're not good. I was gonna I was gonna run it, but I forgot that this is our main power line into the hole of the space center. So we can't we can't neglect. Oh, and our and we have to finish off our rail connection as well. So let's get that going. We're going to place that right over the top of the freeway. We'll get that as low as we can. So the rail company has a, a significant problem with what we've done. This is not in their benefit to rebuild this, but they're going to receive a grant from the DOT to do so. Or maybe even better, maybe it's owned by the DOT. And the DOT is, is ha happy to help. Department of Transportation. If I ever slip into acronyms, I'm sorry. I live in a world of them. Okay, now we can run again. So I added a clover leaf here for a very specific reason. This gives us options. Uh, so we could biffa, uh, uh, biffa eyes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good way of putting it. This, uh, maybe we will. We'll just add some lane mathematics here. And now it's the perfect clover leaf. So. What we're gonna do here now is start to give some thought to our connection over here. We wanna connect this collector up to this highway. We want to respect the topography. So let's do it. So what we're gonna do is gonna connect these up real quickly so that we can use our grid to find the center. Now that we have the center, we can make our connection. So we're gonna add everything on because we've selected the center we're going to follow our terrain. So from here, I do want to set my terrain height and then slope down because this is very steep. In fact, I think I'm going to need to back up even further. That's not good enough. There we go. Now we have a nice connection. These are the ways into our neighborhood. There are no more. This is it. So if you were hoping for something better, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we're gonna make our connections here. There we go, we are all set up. Perfect. So now as we look back here, I want to fix the terrain heights right here. You'd imagine that as they're going through grading, they're doing this. So I imagine this being one of the projects where you drive past the field and you see everything tore up. There are uh, detention basins that are waiting to become de detention basins. You can see the roads, you can see the building pads. Everything is set up to get going. And that's exactly what this development is. Someone has clearly got some motivation to get this project going and they're doing it. All right, so we're just smoothing that out to make sure that we have the ability to have nice saleable lots. So this is flowing a bit slower than I was hoping and I'm wondering how much my rocks are interfering. As much as I like them, I don't want them to be the reason the river doesn't flow. So I'm gonna get rid of those for now. We can always add them in downstream later. And it seems like that's helping. Yeah, it's better. We're gonna need to keep an eye on this. I might need to do more to make this work. I also hope that this greenery here is not creating issues. I might just clear it in this area. There we go. Now we've got some flow, some significant flow. So that is significantly better. I'm, I'm pleased. I just don't want to empty this out either. So that's, that's another concern of mine. 
I want to make sure that we are not depleting water faster than we are adding it. It almost looks like we are at this point, but we will see. We will see. And the other thing we could do, if we need more water, is add another, and add another uh, freshwater outlet. We'll, we'll see. All right. So we've got our overall collector network here. And then what we're going to add is a minor collector network. So we're going to use these large avenues with grass to make our roadway network. So these are going to be the roads that most of the local roads feed from. That's not a rule. That's just something that we're going to try to stick to for the most part. What I've tried to do here is I've tried to respect the topography as best I can. And we might do something interesting here. Something you sometimes see in suburbs. The road just ends. That's the end of it. <laughs> no more collector. No clue why. Just stops. And now we are going to be entirely focused on the creation of little areas of, of development. So let's start, we'll actually start off from this main collector. And this will be act a bit as a minor arterial as, or minor collector as well. So that'll be a road that does have connectivity. And now we're going to create a series of roads that don't have it. So as we talk to Karen, she becomes obsessed with speaking about product and having product that meets the needs of a variety of customers and clients. So as a result, these roads are not going to conform to a regular network. They're going to be varying widths apart, try to have bigger lots for some folks that want to pay for it. And now through here, we're going to have connections, but they're not going to meet up with anything. They're just going to be there. So there is connectivity here, but you're not getting anywhere any any time soon because the connectivity doesn't make any sense. So it's one of those things. If you've ever been in a disorienting neighborhood, where you know maybe you've wondered why was it designed in this way, it's likely to discourage cut through traffic. And the way that they're doing this is by having a network that doesn't make a ton of sense. You, there's no clear path. So we're going to go one step beyond this now. We're going to just have cul-de-sacs. And my skin is crawling making this neighborhood. I'm going to be completely honest with you. <laughs> because this is such bad roadway layout. But it is certainly the kinds of plats that you see sometimes coming in. You just have to wonder, do they realize what they're doing? For the future of the community, that is. And then you, you start to understand that maybe that's not their their primary objective, having a, a good network for the community as a whole. That's why planning is so important. So that's actually something I've explained to developers before. And when they're really upset with me and I've, I've told them that, you know, I, this, you know, staff can't get behind their, their plan. Uh, and they're very upset and they, they say things like, well, why not? Like I wanted a very exclusive community and I've designed it and you've rejected it. You're, you're taking my freedom. And the thing is for the short term, absolutely. It is, it is a burden for them. They're unable to use their land in the way that they see fit. The problem is land gets sold and over time things redevelop. And just look look at this roadway network that I've developed. Imagine trying to redevelop this for anything other than single family homes. It's not gonna happen. You, you just, you can't do it. So as a result, oh, notify me when the year ends now. Um, we are growing our student population significantly at the Verde Beach Pyrotechnic Institute. That's great. Good old institute losing students. Looks like they all switched over. <laughs> so, but for the city, this is a long-term issue. And you know, provision of services, et cetera, et cetera, that is a problem for the city forever. So 
you've got to be aware of that as a planner. You can't just you can't just say it's it, it'll be okay. This is what you want to do because it, it might not be in the best interest of the community in the long term. That said, the planner doesn't have final say. Planning is political. And I know that I've had comments on the, on the channel like, steer clear of politics. Well, I can't. Uh, and I'll tell you why. The main reason why is all planning is political. It's politically motivated. It's a political process run by politicians. So staying apolitical is, is darn near impossible. And it would be disingenuous for me to say that all planners don't have views about development. Now, some of those views, I think people could view as debatable as to whether they're good or not. Uh, the type of view, you know, not all planners agree. You know, I've worked with planners who think that all development is good all the time. And you talk to some people and they'll say, well, that's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> you know, like you can't, you can't rely on development to keep your city afloat in, in the good times and the bad. It just doesn't work. Um, you know, and, and, and that's something that, you know, personally I prescribe to as well. You don't need to, you shouldn't need to constantly grow to be a community that works. But there are certainly people who feel that way, planners who feel that way. And uh, it's tough to, it's tough to dispute something that is not an exact science. There is no right answer here. There are more right answers, <laughs> in my opinion, but uh, no right answers. So I'm defaulting back to connectivity, which is a, a I think it tells something about my opinions. <laughs> so let's just see what we've done here. We've got a neighborhood. There are cul-de-sacs. There are convoluted connections. Things don't make sense. And that is exactly what we were hoping for. Very nice. All right, so next up, we're gonna develop along this edge here. And I'm sure that this would make the folks down here none too happy, but they really don't have a lot of say in it. So my guess is they come out, and when I say my guess is I've seen this a hundred times. They have, even if, even if they've only lived there for a little while, they've gotten used to the idea of not having neighbors, having a pristine hillside above them. And Karen Sterling comes in and she's got another idea. And she owns the land, so she's probably gonna win. <laughs> she's, she's just, just reasonably, she's probably gonna win. So that is very steep right there. That's one of those situations where I'd love to have node controller. You don't need it. You can certainly come through, use your slope terrain tool and respect the topography. There we go, much nicer, much nicer. So through here, we are going to just again, have some faux connectivity, just a couple connections, and then we'll go ahead and loop through here without any real connectivity at all. I mean, this is a cul-de-sac. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's not, that's not doing what you'd, you'd hope from a connectivity standpoint. You're still funneling all the traffic onto this road right here. So now we have some proper cul-de-sacs and maybe we'll even try to improve the saleability of these lots by adding some more right there. This is going to be a whole bunch of cul-de-sacs and we are going to level some land to ensure that things are as developable as possible. I think this is the most evil way to use the slope terrain tool. <laughs> I don't like it. Maximum development potential here. That's what they're hoping for. So another ugly little neighborhood, <laughs> in my opinion, off here. We do need to have more than one connection in though, so we're gonna make one more. That's just not gonna fly from a public safety standpoint. They're gonna look at that and say, we need to have more. In fact, they're gonna look at this and they're gonna go, huh, well, I don't like it. I wish you'd add more connectivity, but I guess we can do it. We are maxing out all of our maximum distances for cul-de-sacs. We're doing some really ugly things.
And again, we're maximizing our land here. We might even add another little cul-de-sac here. Maximize, maximize what we can do. And then what we're gonna finish up is we're gonna add develop lots here and here, and then we're gonna add our utilities. I'm not incredibly satisfied with the way that this water is flowing. Really hoping to do a little bit more. So we're gonna keep playing with it. Seems like that might help. You see the water just really coming out of there now. We might need one more of these though. We'll have to keep an eye on it. I'm gonna keep playing with it while we're developing this neighborhood. So now through here, I think what I'm gonna do is have a series of cul-de-sacs. So we are going to have another local road that's kind of functioning as a collector. And then we're gonna connect up to one half of this collector couplet. That's perfect. <laughs> it's actually horrible. And then, well, that I did not wanna make that. I wanna make that connection, but not like that. Okay, so I'm pulling that out so that I can get a nice grade on this. Look at that, nice and smooth. I probably should have pre-graded this, but if I'm not gonna pre-grade it, I do need to post-grade it, so. There we go. And then we're gonna follow this with another local collector sort of road. What you'll notice is I'm just completely disregarding roadway hierarchy, which often happens in suburban areas. You'll either see an, an extreme, whoops, an extreme amount of attention paid to it, to, to the point that it's, it's almost a parody of what it should be, or you see complete madness where you have roads functioning as as other sorts of roads in the, in the in the in the hierarchy because of of the lack of connectivity and that is precisely what we're going to see here i'm going to turn on our terrain and try to respect it maybe even allow that to determine the path of a couple of these roads so because of the terrain, we're gonna have some challenges here and we might just have some really long roads. And I think we're actually gonna just avoid that connection. So we get another connection into our collector. We'll get rid of this and this is gonna be a problem. I can tell you that already. In fact, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. We're gonna call a mulligan there because that will have problems. So one of the things that might be expected in a neighborhood this big would be a, uh, a traffic impact analysis, a TIA. And that the reason is this could, I would imagine this neighborhood with the number of single family homes that would develop here would create some significant traffic challenges. So, when you have that, you sometimes want to ensure that you have whatever insurance you can to ensure that if things are gonna be bad, they're not horrible. <laughs> you know? That you're getting the exactions you need out of the developer to ensure that things are at least gonna function day one. And hopefully in the future, if you're, if you're being proactive about it. So I'm sure that you've seen things like this where the roadway network is disjointed. You can make connections between neighborhoods. The reason for this is we're going to add pedestrian connections through and the neighborhood will feel that that's good enough, I guess. <laughs> or the developer will rather. The neighborhood will probably come in and complain about it down the line saying, why didn't you make these connections? And all I will be able to say as the planner is this was not how uh, we would have preferred it, but it, this is how it was platted. So, yeah. We'll actually take this one away because we need a connection in here to these cul-de-sacs, but not one that's gonna act as a cut-through. So this one right here, if I would've made this, this would've been a cut-through. This might still be, but that's very direct. So now it's not as direct. And the last bit that we're gonna wanna develop, at least for residential, is right here. This is still not as successful as I was hoping. Before we develop that, I think I want to add one more of these water features. So 
So hopefully I'll be able to get rid of these at some point in the future, but for the time being, the power lines it is, for the time being I think it's necessary to keep this flowing. And it seems like that was part of our issue. We do have plenty of water, so hopefully this solves our issue. The other thing that we could do is certainly take a look at our terrain. Maybe we're just up a little bit too high. But now we don't have a ridge at all, so I'm a little concerned about that. That might do the trick. So this will feed directly into the water, make sure that our river is flowing. We're good. All right. So our last little residential development before we start thinking about everything else. We do need to leave space for our gate that we're going to have. We're going to add that very soon, too. So we'll have local connectivity in there, but not really much in the way of external connections. And when we do have them, they won't make sense. It's not going to be that quick connection here, not a cut through. All right. So this area up here, you might wonder why I didn't develop this. I'm going to reserve this for office and commercial type uses, and that will be a goal of the developer to also incorporate those sorts of uses. And that is where we are going to have our train facility as well. In fact, as I look at this, I'm noticing a couple of issues with my development pattern. I have too much connectivity and that's going to make it difficult for me to make this a gated community. So we are going to actually change just a couple of things. There we go. Now we can add a gate here and add one here and we'll be able to isolate this area as a non-gated part of the community. In fact, let's just get our gates in now. It's about time, I think, to get those in. And for this, we're going to use our two-lane toll booth. Okay, so that should be all of the ways into the neighborhood. And they are now behind a paywall. <laughs> so, <laughs> you want to get in? You're going to have to make it through the guards. All right. So, we'll make our couple of connections here. Perfect. Uh, now, the next thing I want to think about is path connections. It's going to be critical. This is why sometimes you look at, oh, never mind. I missed one. <laughs> I felt like something was off, and it was. Okay, so now I want to go through and add some path connections. So I'm going to do that. Just connecting up some of these areas so that you can walk places. Okay, so now when you zoom out, it looks well connected. But you and I both know... That is not connectivity. Not for all modes anyway. That is connectivity for PEDs to make trips that don't matter. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're, you guess you could walk to your neighbor's house as the crow flies. It's probably pretty close anyway. So it's nice to have it. If, if, I'll put it this way. It's better than nothing. But that's not saying a lot. That's saying very little actually. Alright, so we need to get our water pipes underneath our roads where they belong. We're going to do that right now. Whew. Well, that was a lot of work and it is absolutely crazy. And this is a good demonstration of one of the problems of suburban planning. And that is look at the density of water pipes here. Thankfully, suburban communities don't have no limits. Unfortunately, I'm not quite so lucky. So I'm curious to know what this did to, 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 to for me in, in terms of reaching my node limit because this is not good. I don't like this. In fact, I'm going to get rid of some of the excess pipes. But as much as I don't like this, this is reality. This is what a suburban water network looks like. That's why it's so expensive for a city to maintain. And this is why you discourage this kind of development. And if you are a taxpayer, you should hope that your city is discouraging this because this is exactly what will cost you a ton of money. It's why your property taxes go up. So <laughs> it's it's one of those weird things where planners get ragged on for controlling land, but 
when we steer developers away from this type of pattern we are told that we are taking people's land and controlling them and yada yada and ultimately we're we're, we're protecting the fiduciary interest of the community so it's a it's a weird dichotomy there it's one that i think all planners struggle with all right so along this road here which none of these are named we're probably going to do that soon in a stream so um that is why i'm not being overly concerned with this at this juncture uh, we are going to go ahead and make this a suburban office complex and with with that we're going to have the large arterial network or large collector network rather that comes with that generally you see these suburban type complexes overbuilding their roads in a way that is absolutely crazy uh, you know they they're paying for these roads so it really shocks me that they are so excited to build these in some cases but in, in in some cases they need it you know i mean the reality is if the only way that someone can get to work is by car you're going to need to facilitate that car getting to work now i i cut this off because this is where our train station is going to be so we're going to mirror our road here and we're not going to connect we'll get close and then we will have our trusty path connection so if someone wants to break into the neighborhood this is the place to do it and now i want to take a look at our our train stations and i i i know the one i want to go with already and i really think i like this ground island platform train station again it feels luxury it feels like something that would be an event it's an art piece and that is exactly what i think that this developer would be lobbying for Karen wants this to feel like an upscale neighborhood. Now we have disrespected our topography in so many different ways today. It is, it is hard to, to count the number of ways, but we are going to fix it. You see that there's this ridge here. We're not going to keep that. Unfortunately, because we haven't respected our topography, we're going to have lumpies and bumpies along this road as buildings develop. And we're going to have to take special care to match our foundations up with the ground by doing lots of leveling. And through all of this, for a while we had a ton of extra soil availability. We are no longer in that fortunate position. In fact, we have none. <laughs> so <laughs> we are going to have to just live within our means with soil. All right, so let's get this connected up. So I'm actually quite concerned that we're going to have significant backups here once we get this going. So I'm going to double track this. And I think I'm going to continue the double track for quite some ways. Okay, we're going to have to see what this does for us. I am concerned. I am very concerned. And last but not least, I do want to make one more local roadway connection through here. We are not going to maximize our, our, our developable land. It's an office park, and I think that they would want the additional breathing room through here. There we go. All right, so we've done a lot. Now we need to think about city services. I'm going to start placing buildings... And I'm thinking about this entire area all at once. So we're just going to go down the line. So first of all, clinics. I think that rather than building a bunch of clinics, we're going to build one hospital. And it'll be right off this collector. Same thing with police and fire. Just one of each. All in, in a very close proximity to one another. Death care right there too. And then we are going to have elder care. You're going to respect our elders and give them a nice view of the water. And our child health center will be very close to our hospital. Little note of all of our activity in one space. Uh, whether or not that's a good thing, I'll leave that up to you. I would say it's probably not great. We'll have a yoga garden as well. And a sauna. So everything in close proximity there. Now, I want to get to our education. 
So we don't need a college, but we do need a couple of high schools. This is gonna be a very large neighborhood and we wanna keep those close to our main roads. So we'll put them on the outside over here and we're gonna have community schools only and we're gonna have four of them to start out at least. And again, we'll keep those close to our collector connections. And now I want to place some parks and I want to think about the places that I just developed. And let's put in some playgrounds next to our schools. Okay, so now we will move on to parks generally. Actually, let's make sure that we have some basketball courts near our high schools. So we've got a high school right here. It's a couple of basketball courts. Same thing over here. Oh, that is ugly. That is not going to work. Yeah, and even this high school, I am not enjoying the grading a bit. Let's pay the money. Pay the money. We will get that moved. Oh, and I'm thinking that this is all, yeah, it's all bad. <laughs> So I don't know that we're going to succeed in having a great location for it. And we don't have any soil, so we might actually just collect some from another part of the development. And in the future, I'm thinking about building a pit mine with some of the soil that I take and use that. But that's not a today project. Okay, so that's good. Now on to just our regular parks, and what we want to do is make sure that we are totally saturated here. We want parks everywhere we can fit them without destroying anything. So I'm looking first to see if there's any place I can put one of these large parks. I don't think I've left the space, which is fine. I expected that. We are going to have a number of smaller parks. And we're going to also want to, as we place these, we're likely going to want to make path connections through. So this sort of parkland dedication would be an option, not a requirement generally in a lot of cities. Developers would have the option to either dedicate parkland or pay a fee. It would be very unusual to have them place this many parks unless they saw it as an amenity. And generally a city would build the park to their specifications. Unless the developer is really interested in doing so, then they would. And we'll build some small parks. The idea will be even though there's not a lot that you can get to here, you can drive or you can walk to a park no matter where you live. Now I do want to have a botanical garden. We're going to place that right at the end of this road. It's going to be a really neat feature here. And I think that's about where we're going to leave it. We are going to have some gardens and th those sorts of things over in this office park, as well as some plazas. Let's just look through one time to see if there are any path connections that we can make. Even in the industrial park, or the uh, the office park, I want to make those connections because they can be really critical in these areas where maybe there aren't many other opportunities to walk. And I am going to try to find a place where I can make a connection up from Oceanside. And I'm sure that they love that. This is an opportunity for the neighborhood that's very exclusive to be able to, to get to their neighborhood and use their amenities. It's got to be very frustrating, but it happens. Okay, so I think I've made connections everywhere now. We're finally ready for some land use planning. So we've got our health care, we've got our fire care, we've got our police coverage, we've got our education. We've got a modest amount of transit, although we didn't connect it up now that I think about it. We've got our transit. We'll not allow inner city trains here. We've got parks. We've got death care. We've got water. We've got power. We don't have zoning, but we have strong demand for everything. Let's do it. So along of our collectors, we're going to have along our, our real collectors, our, our principal collectors, we're going to make sure that we only have commercial zoning. These are going to be 
the roads where all of the traffic gets funneled and the, they're absolutely going to do well because of all of this activity. We're not going to zone inside of here at all. This will be a park. Before I forget, let's get this neighborhood created so we can set some policies. Okay, so this will be Sterling Estates. But I need a name for this industrial park. So if you have one, let me know. All right, so let's finish out our commercial zoning. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And hopefully this makes a connection up soon. I think it's going to. Uh, so next, we're gonna go along here and I think that we're gonna see the exact same pattern along a portion of this collector, basically outside of Sterling Hills. We're gonna have a bunch of commercial along here. Or Sterling Estates, rather. I'm just now realizing I didn't get water inside of here, so we're gonna do that. There we go. And I also want to add a bit of coverage over in this district over here. So this is not technically part of the same neighborhood. So we're gonna add police, fire, and healthcare to this neighborhood as well, and as well as death care. There we go. So at this point, I need to get the office in, and after the office, we're gonna do something that is very painful to me, and that is a gigantic swath of residential. So these uses are very separated, and you know, that's problematic for a number of reasons. You're not gonna walk to anything here. This whole neighborhood is about driving. So uh, since I wanna go through and zone everything residential, I do wanna put some fences up. I think that makes sense anyway, considering the type of neighborhood it is. So I wanna look at the fences that we could put up and make sure that whatever fence we're using provides a great deal of privacy. I'm actually thinking this ore industry fence. Nah, it's sheet metal now. We're gonna actually... I think we're gonna go with the zoo fence. So I'm gonna turn on my grid and just kinda go along here using the fence along the grid. So here's where it's gonna feel very unfair. In fact, I'm gonna change this a bit It's gonna feel very unfair that uh, you can't see in there from down here. You got a fence, you're fenced in. So this is a nice neighborhood and this is an even nicer neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, as a result, they don't want anyone to see inside. Okay, so you are not getting in here. There's a basically a wall around this entire place. And if you want to come here, you are certainly supposed to be here. Not, nothing, uh, no, no, no one's getting in here unless they know someone. Curious, there's this weird bit of zoning up there. I'm just going to have to ignore it. Okay, and the very last thing I want to do here is a whole bunch of residential zoning. That is what this place is after all. There's a whole bunch of detailing I want to do. We're not going to get that get get to that today. This is uh, taking longer than I had anticipated, but I like it. I, and this is a build that deserves the time. Okay, so there were fixes that I intended to get to in this episode that I'm not going to be able to get to, but I don't want to leave this without seeing how this builds out. So what I think we're gonna do is let this run for a few minutes, let a few years pass, and see how this all turns out. I'm gonna call a quick timeout. I do wanna set some policies. First of all, default style. I'm thinking European suburbia for this one. I want high-tech housing. I want to be a small business enthusiast and a big business benefactor. I want high-rises banned. I also want electric cars. 
we're also going to lower taxes, tax relief for offices, for low density commercial, low density residential, have an education boost. We're also going to recycle, a free Wi Fi, park maintenance boost. I think we might do for profit education. No, we won't do that. At that, uh, how about book fair? I don't think we actually built a library. We're going to do that real quick. And we also need a post office, so we'll do that as well. So near our little city services campus, we'll have a library. We also need a post office. That's a miss on my behalf. I don't want that to remain. And we have some significant gaps in our power system. Just to get this moving, I'm going to add some temporary power lines. I'm also going to add in a park. In the future, this is going to be our main park in this area. Also need a name for this. Let's go ahead and we're going to add a gate. Okay, so I figured I'd add some really basic park type amenities in here. We will flesh this out in a future episode, but it feels like a big miss to do nothing. <laughs> so we're going to do something, even if what we're doing is pretty modest. We will certainly clean this up and give this more thought in the future, but I want to get it going. It will improve land values, which will be a big benefit to us. Okay, not the perfect park, but it's a good enough park. It is definitely a good enough park. And again, I'm going to make some ugly power connections through this park just to keep things moving. Okay, so now we have minimally disruptive power connections through. We will get rid of those in the future. We are going to let this run and see what happens in our new neighborhood. Okay, so I let this run for about 15 minutes now, and we have an interesting development pattern occurring. One that I wouldn't find to be all that realistic. We have our commercial uses developing right along this corridor before anything else. We also have our offices. That's more believable in my mind. But it's, it's bizarre to see the commercial uses developing first. There's no utilization of this road really so I guess I mean there's some but it's not heavy so in reality you wouldn't expect to see this and I think what's even more strange to me is if I look at this you see that our commercial zones are almost entirely zoned up <laughs> so I guess they like having no customers uh, here same situation our offices aren't doing as well and I think we want to look at our policies here and make sure that they make sense. We didn't have tax relief here. I, I, I've said it on this district, but these are two separate districts. Okay, so I wanna look, what is our value like? We're at 57 over here and 42 over here. So that's quite a bit lower than the rest of the city, but not entirely uh, surprising. If you think about it, there's a lot of developable land here. All we need at this point is office. So to not have that within this district is really harming it. Um, so we've got some work to do here. We've definitely got some work. Let's take a look. Obviously near the Cypress grounds, what, what it's currently named, that's high land value everywhere else. That's so good. I do want to take a look at our power. I want to see if we can get rid of some of these power lines now. We can just go through and we, we can clean those things up and that's that's nothing but a benefit to us so i think i think we're in a good spot for today things are oscillating with our development needs and i think a big part of that is we have a lot of land zoned um, and this this development pattern uh having a large um a really exclusive community that that's 
there are issues with that. So I would certainly see this as a potential problem. If this were Verde Beach, they might reject this. They might say, you know, we don't want a community that's this exclusive, that is not inclusive, that 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 outright denies some people's right to access the community. But in an outlying area, they might say that that's okay. They might want the tax revenue more than anything else. And for the Sterling family, so at this point, uh, this is the longest episode of Verde Beach that we've had so far. The most time that I've let it sit and simulate. Um, and I would, I would assume that this is really, really, really tapping Karen out. And because of that, she is going to look at this land over here that she purchased and think, boy, I need to be bailed out. So because of that, we are going to sell some of this land. This is not developing the way that she had hoped. There is a consequence. So you sell this, you lose control. And you're selling it to someone who can afford it. And at this point, Karen Sterling just needs to be able to float her development. She paid for all of this infrastructure, all of these roads, all of those power lines, all of the water pipes. That's expensive. And she's required to pay for that before anyone even claims a lot. She also paid for platting, engineering, grading, a whole bunch of things. And this park that she really cared about, but maybe that wasn't the best way to spend her money. As a result, she had to sell this to someone who could afford it. And we know who can afford it. Myrtle. The Myrtle family can afford it. They have purchased this land. We're going to have to see what they do with it. But I'll tell you what. I have a sneaking suspicion it's not what the Sterling family would have done with it. The Sterling family may have gotten the better view, but this just might be the more valuable land. The land closer to Verde Beach. The land that could be used for things that the city needs more than really high, high, you know, high-end residential. So don't be surprised if the Myrtle family does some things that maybe the Sterling family wasn't anticipating. Don't be surprised that this is a little bit different on the other side of the, of, of the road. Anyway, I think we're going to leave it here today. I'm pleased with where things have ended. I, I think that even though this is not completely built out, we've let this go at this point. This is about a three-year episode. That's one of our longer episodes, and we need to end it. There are a number of things I wanted to fix. I wanted to add a bus route in between our satellite campus and our campus. We're going to get to those things. We're going to do it in the next episode. Um, please let me know what you think about this in the comments. What do you think about this Sterling Estates? Do you, do, you, do you like it? Let me know what you want to name the park and what you want to know name the Cherry District. And let me know what you think Myrtle Fields is going to develop into. But we're going to wrap it up here. So uh, again, really thank you so much for sticking with me for through 50 episodes of Verde Beach. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon su supporters. They uh, have been sticking with me and uh, keeping me motivated and, and supporting me on this journey. And I appreciate them. Thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, shares, everything. It all means the world to me, and I thank you for that. No matter how big this channel gets, I still am I'm kind of dumbfounded by where this has gotten, and I, I appreciate you. This save will be available. It will be down in the comments pinned, and we're going to have a brief city tour like we always do. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.
Thank you.